Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of online poker vlogger hands and bring you 10 of the best. If you haven't already, don't forget to click the subscribe button. It really does help out the channel a bunch. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we've got some hero jams. We've got some interesting decision making at the table. And we've got the kind of nonsense that you might only expect in your local home game. Good to know it's happening at the professional tables too. So sit back, relax, and let's make a start. Number 10 this week and close to broke is playing in a 510 cash game at the Commerce Casino in California. And in this one, Kieran, what's that you say? Hero jam, you say? Don't mind if we do. Under the gun makes it $35. Plus one makes a call. I'm in the plus two position. I decide to make the call after I look down at pocket fours. Looking to set mine here. The cutoff, who's definitely probably one of the better tables at uh, the better players at the table, excuse me. He makes it 175 to go. Holds all the way to me. I'm the last person here. I've got to defend. There's a ton of free money in the middle. And I'm getting the right price to set mine. And we're both over 150 big lines deep. I make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes ace, jack, six, with two spades, heart. All right, I do have the four spades, so that's some saving grace, I guess. But otherwise, I check it over to my opponent who bets 125 as a down bet. He's gonna be doing this with his whole range here. I think a lot of people are just gonna fold it here. I think uh, GTO says to fold here. I think any reasonable coach that believes in, you know, exploitative play probably would say to fold here. But I go against all of that. Why not? I make the call. We're going off to a turn card that comes the Ace of Clubs. Ah, okay, all right. Pretty interesting. Even more so when I check to my opponent, he bets two hundred and twenty-five dollars. What the heck do you have, sir? What do you have? What do you? What are you, are you lying to me? Because it kind of feels like you're lying to me. It kind of feels like my opponent has like a king high flush draw. I make the call. I'm a non-believer. It's hard for him to have an ace at this point. There's two accounted for. We're going off to a river card that comes the six of hearts. What the heck? We have jack high now. Darn it. My pair is counterfeited. I'm super annoyed. But this has never stopped me before, guys. There is literally no other way to say it besides this. Where there's a will, there's a freaking way. Let me know down in the section below. Are we just giving up? Are you just checking this river? If somehow you got to this river with me, which a lot of people wouldn't, you would have just folded the flop. Are you are you doing what I'm are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm going for gusto, guys. I take a look at my opponent. I'm trying to see whatever live reads I can get. I don't feel like he has an ace, and that's just enough for me to go with it. I jam all in for $1,300, going for a massive overbet here where it's hard to ever be bluffing. My opponent snap folds. Woo! Oh, my God. Am I, this, it was a ridiculous play. What the hell am I doing? I'm losing my mind. But, uh... I show the bluff, the table goes crazy, everybody's blown away, and I was joking with my opponent. I had a pretty solid read on him, I think. I told him immediately that I think he folded king, uh, king X of spades, a like king queen of spades, king ten of spades. He nodded his head when I told him that I, said, I thought I had the best hand the whole way either way. And, uh, well, I better be getting some freaking value from now on because I deserve it after that. Number nine this week, and we're going to stay with Close to Broke in that 510 cash game at the Commerce in California. And you just got to listen to your gut, right? Right, Kieran? I find myself in middle position. I decide to raise to $35 after looking down at 10 six of diamonds. Pretty garbage hand, but and we're just looking to get in the mix against a lot of these people. I'm going to play a little looser, like you see Garrett do sometimes. The cutoff makes a call. The big blind makes a call. And uh, one of the blinds that was folding, it was a little weird, but he has this weird thing where he like picks up his cards from the front. You, so you could see it when he's folding. Anyways, I immediately say, hey, I, I think he folded the six of clubs. And I ask for reassurance. And he says, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. And uh, that's kind of important, especially when the flop comes six, six deuce. Because now maybe I'm making an angle. I did say it before the flop came out, but 
after I see bet okay. here Thank for you. $35, That's he says, oh yeah, it was a seven of clubs. So we get that squared away pretty quickly. The whole table and everyone in the hand knows that it was not the six of clubs, so that it's still an uh, option that's out there. The cutoff calls, I'm going heads up to a flop, a turn card, excuse me, that comes the ace of spades. Brings a backdoor flush draw, and at this point, it's time to polarize. I'd be using this as a scare card, even as a bluff, and I can be doing this with backdoor flush draws as well. I make it $200 to go. Our opponent pretty quickly makes a call. We're going off to river card that comes with three of spades. This brings in that backdoor flush draw, but I'm not really all that really concerned about that at the moment. I bet $400 for value. Just not a whole lot of backdoor flush draws I can get there. I just don't see like King High floating this flop. So I don't know. Maybe they are. My opponent tanks forever. So we're like, please call, please call, please call until he raises. He goes all in for $1,300. Now I'm like, gosh darn it. What did I do? Um, I got to start wearing like a wristband or something on my hand where I could just slap myself or pinch myself or something like these people are just never freaking bluffing here. And the day one of these people can show me a bluff here, man, I'll just back up a bring truck and just give them all my money because they just don't bluff here. My hand is just way too good and I'm just way too stubborn to ever make the fold. So we make the call on our opponent show 6-3 and I'm uh, pretty frustrated. I can't believe he called 6-3 preflop. And uh, furthermore, I can't believe uh, the three came on the river. There were so many cards that obviously we have the better hand with on the river we can still chop with a ton of cards and we scoop with a ton of cards the three is the one card that i don't scoop with and it came so yeah ggs to him you can't complain when you lose just a part of the variance and just a part of you know the situation you find yourself in good hands to you sir we're stuck and uh we're gonna need a battle back because we were looking for a win that's not how we're gonna get there Number eight this week, and Wolfgang Poker is playing in a 2-5 cash game at the Borgata Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I'm not sure that this is as easy of a call as it looks here. Nice hand, Wolfgang. Nice hand. I look down at pocket queens here and this hand gets out of control fast. I'm in the under the gun position and I raise it up to $20. Quran and the cutoff both put in the call. We're going three ways out of position to a flop, which comes paired 995 rainbow. Most of the time I'm going to be betting here, but in the moment I decided to balance my range and start with a check. Balancing my range, meaning I'm checking here with my over pairs as well as a lot of my missed hands. That way when I check raise, I can also have strong hands. When I check call, I can also have strong hands as well. And uh, Karan and the other opponent are pretty aggressive opponents, so I like my check here. Karan decides to check and the action's on the cutoff, who fires out for $35. Could be going for the check raise occasionally, could be going for the check call. I decided to do the latter here, and the reason is I'm not really scared of too many things. Sure, if they have a 9 here, I'm behind, but raising just puts more money in unnecessarily. But if I just call here, it keeps my hand disguised, and uh, that's what happens. I put in the call, and Karan does as well. We're going three ways still to the turn. Not really sure what we're looking to avoid, but the 6 of hearts seems pretty harmless. The only hand that gets there is 7-8. Once again, I start with the check. Action's on Karan now, and he decides to lead out into the field for $125. His lead's interesting because he's betting into the aggressor on the flop, the cutoff position, and uh, sure enough, the cutoff gets out of the way, so the action's back over to me. Obviously, I'm never folding here, but I think about my options. Does raising have any merit? I don't think so. When he's betting here, he's representing a nine, a nine that doesn't want to see any other heart come off on the river and wants to protect his hand, so raise just doesn't make any sense. I put in the call and we're off to the river. Looking for a clean river, I think we got it with the four of diamonds. I could check it over to Quran or I could go for a weird wonky 10% pot size bet, which is what I've been experimenting with lately on the felt. So I grab three red ships and one green ship, toss it in the middle, 10% size of the pot. Now here's the logic with this 10% bet. When I bet this small, it looks like to Quran I'm trying to get to a sh cheap showdown. So if he raises here, I'm going to have to pay him off and call because I have a very strong hand. However, it also gets value from a hand like pocket 8s, pocket 7s. Like, can they fold on this board blocking the straight? Probably not, even though they don't love their life. Probably just going to have to puke call $40 here. So I really like my bet here. And uh, sure enough, the first option ends up happening. He rips his entire stack in for $750. Now in the moment here, I'm hemming and hawing, but in real time, I should just be snap calling this because I made the bet to induce and that's exactly what happens. If he has seven, eight, sure, I'm gonna have to pay him off. If he has a hand like pocket sixes, great, he's gonna get my money. Likewise with ace nine, king nine, but 
When I bet $40 here, I'm gonna have to pay him off and eventually I put my money where my mouth is and I put my entire stack in the middle. Karan Snap turns over King 7 of Diamonds and the speed at which he turned it over has me worried at first till I realize he just has King High, turn over my Queens right away not to slow roll him and uh, $1,900 coming my way. To his defense, I kinda like his bluff because he blocks the nut straight and when I check the flop, I'm not really doing that at a high frequency with any of my Queens, Kings and Aces. So when I get to the river here, his all in bet is gonna make me fold a lot of my hands. Like pocket 10s, probably just gonna fold. Pocket 8s, pocket 7s, always gonna fold. He blocks 7 8 suited, so he also blocks pocket 7s, but I really like his bluff here, and uh, I like it even more when I'm gonna end up getting paid off here in a nearly $2,000 pot. Let's freaking go. Number 7 this week, and Lexo is playing in a 10 20 cash game at the new Resorts World Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And ugh, how much money is in this pot? I hope you guys are ready for a big one. Under the gun limps for $20 and we have ace of diamonds, ace of hearts in the hijack. I raised to $80 and now the button, the action player with over $20,000 in his stack re-raises us to $260. Action folds back over to me and this is a slam dunk four bet all the time. I have a little over $5,000 in my stack so I make it $800. The action back over on the button player who seems to be wanting to play some big pots, so I don't expect him to ever be folding here. And he doesn't. He makes the call. So with pocket aces, we're going to the flop. Heads up, it comes out eight, three deuce, two hearts. A great board for us. I mentioned earlier at the Bellagio playing 510 that when people three bet you, they usually always have queens, kings, and aces, but this game is completely different. We're playing an uncapped 510 20 game against a player on the button who's super aggressive with over $20,000 in a stack. I do think he's going to be three betting a wider range on the button and probably defending pretty wide as well because we have over $5,000 in our stack. He can have some offsuit and suited broadways, some offsuit ace high hands as well. Maybe some smaller pocket pairs and some suited connectors. So the reason why I say this board is so good is because he's never going to have two pair on this board. He's never going to have 8-3, three, 3 deuce, or 8 deuce in a 4 bet pot. So I lead out for a $410 bet, about a 1 fourth pot size bet here. Basically just trying to keep him in there with all of his trash hands that completely missed on this board. That will want to float me and potentially try to bluff me on the turn. After thinking for about 20 seconds, he makes the call for 410, and we're going here to the turn, which is the 7 of hearts, now giving us the nut flush draw along with our overpair. With 3 hearts on the board, we could be losing here to a flush, but given the fact that we do have the ace of hearts in our hand, I don't really feel too scared of that. I think against a very aggressive player who has the propensity to bluff in big pots, the best line here is to check, which is what I do. By checking here, my hand's going to look a lot like ace-king or ace-queen. This will allow him to bluff with some hands that he floated me with on the flop versus that small sizing and also value bet hands like pocket tens or pocket jacks. After thinking for about 20 seconds, he throws out a $2,000 bet into about a $2,400 pot. I look back at my stack and I have about $4,100 left and I have to figure out what I want to do. Against a very nitty player, I may be able to find a fold here versus a $2,000 bet, but with pocket aces and a four bet pot with the ace of hearts against an action player who definitely has the capability of putting in some big bluffs, there's no way I'm folding. So my options are call 2000 or go all in for the rest of my $4,500. Let's say he has an over pair to the board like pocket tens, jacks, or queens, and he bets $2,000 and I go all in for my $4,500. He's never going to be folding given that price and over an $11,000 pot. I don't want to call and allow a scare card to come out in the river and the action to go check check. So after thinking for about 30 seconds with pocket aces and a four bet pot, I decide to go all in. I ship in 4,500, he snap calls, we're going here to the river, we decide to run out the board two times, and the first river is a 5, the second river is another 5, I look over at my opponent and he shows 8, 6 of hearts for a flush, which is going to crack our aces over an $11,000 pot being shipped in the opposite direction. Probably the worst feeling in poker is watching all of your chips being shipped in the opposite direction. Number six this week, and we're staying in Resorts World in Vegas, but this time with Ethan, Rampage Poker. He's playing in a 10-25 cash game. 
And yeah, I've never seen this for decision making at a poker table. Let us know what you think in the comments. Following that hand, I pick up Jack-10 offsuit in the low jack and raise it up to 75. We get the button and big blind to call. So three ways to a flop of king, five, three, two spades and a club. Completely whiffed on this board. Action checks all the way around and see a free turn, which is the ace of clubs. So two flush draws on the board and the big blind, my friend, bets out 125. Hmm. On a board that should favor me a whole lot more as the preflop raiser and he's betting here. I definitely want to just make the call here. Maybe I can bluff on some runouts. Maybe I can just bink my gut shot straight draw to a queen for Broadway. The other player folds and we're going to a river heads up. I'm in position, which is nice. And the river is the queen of diamonds. Bink again. Sun running so far, the first two hands. And I'm sitting with the nuts again. Anyways, music to our ears. He bets out $200 and it's obviously time to not fold. It's not time to call. It's time to bump up the money in the middle. Sitting with the stone cold nuts, I raise it up to $900. And this player thinks for a long time we're friendly. And he just ends up saying he has no idea what to do. But he ends up thinking of either calling or folding. But he ends up pulling out his number generator on his phone. Random number generator and says that if he spins this, if the phone shows a number from 1 to 50, he makes the call. If, but if it shows 51 to 100, he folds. I don't know what to do. Flip the coin. Pull out the <laughs> randomizer. What do you, what? All right, 0 to 50 is call, 51 to 100 is fold. Okay. What is this? That's what this was called? I don't even remember on the sheet. 0 to 50 is called. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you to the RNG for making me an extra $700. I guess I should tip the phone app as well on top of the dealer for giving me the nuts. I'll take this one. I wish I got the RNG on video because that was kind of ridiculous. They never have love. Number five this week and the fish. Eric Mondragon playing in a 1-2 cash game at the Golden Nugget in Vegas. And it's always good to find yourself up against an opponent like this, unless you are the opponent like this, in which case it's probably time to rethink some life choices. We sit down at the table where the dealer asks us if we would like to buy the button and even though we didn't come all the way to Las Vegas to be a rock, I respectfully declined. It only took a few free hands for me to notice that the gentleman sitting to my left had his check engine light on as he was incoherently drunk. I witnessed this man raise every single hand he was dealt to and get multiple callers on every freaking hand. Everybody at the table knew that this man's lights were on, but no one was home. For this first hand of the night, I'm in middle position looking down at these broke back mountain cowboys. We take a risky route and limping knowing that our hammered opponent is gonna raise its action on the drunk guy and he fucks everything up. He grabs three chips out of his stack, throws them into the pot, then he goes back into his chip stack, grabs more chips and puts those into the pot. The problem with that is that that is called a string bet. You see, you're only allowed one forward motion per action and his forward motion was when he threw in the three bucks. His second forward motion was when he reached back into his chip stack to grab more betting chips. My plan has gone down the drain, but fear not my fish is his sweet baby Jesus got my back when the small blind opponent wasn't paying attention and he puts out four bucks thinking he's calling the drunk guy's bet. In reality, his four bucks is now considered a raise, which means that I can now re-raise. The big blind calls the remaining two, the under the gun player calls the remaining two and when it's action on me, I re-pop it to 25. It's action on the drunk guy and he doesn't disappoint me as he repops me to 50. It folds all the way back around to me and there's just one move here. I'm all in. The drunk guy thinks about it for a little bit and says, I probably can't. This ice is gonna take longer to melt as he counts his chip stack five chips at a time. The whole time he's been counting, he hasn't said call, nor he has done any forward motions that would indicate a call up until here. Of course, there's a stupid ace on the flop that's almost expected when you have these Brokeback Mountain Cowboys, but not today, devil. These Cowboys are gonna hold up versus 10 deuce. The Doyle Brunson hand goes up in flames and we're gonna take this pot down. Number four this week, and Jamin Burton is playing in a 5-10 cash game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And see, this kind of nonsense doesn't only happen at your local home game. 
Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes, the 510 game at the Bellagio gets volatile. Here the low jack limps, the high jack limps, and I race to $40 with king nine of diamonds from the cutoff. The button folds and the small blind decides to put in the 6x raise to $250. Wait, what? If you think the hand ends there, you're wrong. The big blind cold calls the $250 and the original limping low jack, well, he now finds the call as well. What in the hell? Myself and the hijack, we've seen enough. Fold. The epilogue to this hand? The flop comes out 10 high, the small blind bets $200 in both the big blind and low jack fold. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Number three this week, and we're back with Rampage Poker. Ethan is playing in a $1,500 World Series of Poker Monster Stack Tournament up there at the Paris or maybe Bally's in Las Vegas. And there's a nice turn here, but wait, what's that on the river? Moving on to the next fun spot, I pick up pocket sevens and plus one. I raise up to 2,200 here and get both blinds to call. So in position in this spot, surprisingly, and the flop comes 10, 9, 5, all clubs. Not sitting with the club in my hand seems like a pretty easy spot to just check all the way through. Seeing a free turn, which is a seven. Bink, just a good old set now on the turn. Even cooler, small blind checks, but the big line bets out 4,500. It's a pretty scary board and I'm not going away, obviously. Certainly don't want to raise, it seems like an overplay, so I decide on just a call and the small blind folds. The river now is the seven of clubs. Yep, the backdoor quadra is something that you can never ever count out because he just might get there with the stone cold nuts. Anyways, he thinks for a while upon this spot, upon the seven in the board pairing and the fourth club on board, he bets out 4,000. It's nice to see him commit some more chips in the middle because it's clearly going to go my way. And I'm trying to figure out how much I should raise here. Seems like a spot where I'm just only going to be raising the nuts a lot of the time. And hopefully he has like the ace of clubs or something. I decided to go all in for 30,000 effective more or less. He doesn't look too happy about this spot and ultimately ends up just folding. I don't assume that I would have gotten value if I even raised to a smaller sizing like 12 or 15,000. So yeah, maybe this player flopped the flush, wanted to block bet on the river and was going to fold to no matter what sizing. But here I am. Number two this week and Mariano is playing in the King's Lounge, the cash game area of the World Series of Poker. He's at the Paris in a $25, $50 no limit hold'em cash game. And you certainly can't ask for a better flop than this one. We move right along to this next one where there's a small blind open to 175. Yes, that means the action folded all the way around to the small blind. And I'm in the big blind with pocket sixes. Think you can go either way here between calling or raising. The problem with calling is Ethan is going to be aware enough to take advantage of that and raise it up with a few different hands since, you know, my dead money's in the pot. But I decide to call and just cross my fingers that that doesn't happen. And luckily he folds. So we're going to go heads up to a flop. Obviously looking for a six here. But it's overkill. King six six. That's right. We flopped quads very unexpectedly. As is usually the case when you flop four of a kind. And even better news is that my opponent continues with a bet of $100. Now this particular player is aware of uh, who I am. In terms of my YouTube channel. He knows that I bluff a lot and I try to take advantage of boards where I think I could try to scare other opponents sometimes, I guess. So with that in mind, I think raising it up right away is the best play. We're pretty deep and it's going to be hard to give me credit for anything that strong. So I make it $400 right off the bat and I'm happy to see he makes the call. So it doesn't look like he was bluffing on the flop. Fingers crossed for a king or perhaps an ace, you know, anything that could improve him. Unfortunately, it's the seven of diamonds. However, if he's got a king, I still don't expect him to fold. So when he checks, I bet one and a half times the size of the pot, $1,600. Now he goes in the tank. Thinking it over, thinking it over. He's got around $10,000 behind and decides to announce all in. Just kidding. I wish he ends up folding and later told me he had king nine. So he pretty much owned me by folding that hand. Well played, sir. And at number one, 
playing in a 5-5-10 cash game at the Gardens Casino in Hawaiian Gardens, California, is Branson and bingo on the flop too. Here we go, 5-5-10. I always start with $500 because new players start a bomb pot and I don't like risking a full buy-in on my first hand. I top up to $800 after the bomb pot, but this time that's not going to happen as I pick up 4-7 of diamonds under the gun. We all see a flop of 3-5-6 all diamonds, meaning I just flopped a straight flush Cha-ching! There are literally no hands that beat me or could even possibly beat me by the river. So I check and like it's straight out of Casino Royale, everyone starts dumping money in. The guy to my left goes all in. All in. Six million. The guy to his left calls, the low jack calls, the high jack calls. It's back on me. The all in is only for $95. So I'm trying to think how I can get the most money out of everyone here. I make a tiny raise to $215. The under the gun plus two calls. Then the low jack goes all in. Five million. All in. Then I go all in. 40 million, 500,000 all in. Then the under the gun plus two goes all in. It's a four way all in and there's no way I can lose. The turn is an eight, river four, I flip my cards. The under the gun plus one had a six, under the gun plus two had two three, and the low jack had pocket fives for a set. It is absolutely crazy. My first hand dealt, I get a straight flush, make the maximum from everybody and scoop a massive pot you flopped a straight flush how does that feel sir dude i've never i've never <laughs> flopped a straight flush before a straight flush well there we have it folks a flopped straight flush you're not going to see that very often but you saw it right here nice hand branson congratulations for that one it's a shame you weren't playing Ultimate Texas Hold'em. I'm pretty sure that a straight flush on the flop pays a pretty sizable jackpot. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for watching another 10 of the best. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, good luck at the felt.